Good afternoon. Welcome to Trail Talk. I'm so glad you guys could join us today. Um, I'm very excited to introduce you to Betty Beck. Betty is the director, is that the correct title? She is the director of volunteer services at Duncan Regional Hospital. And probably like me, the first thing you think of is the pink ladies. Yes. That's, you know, that's what I always think of. I can remember wasn't there like a candy striper thing way back in the day or something like that? The teenage volunteers. Oh, okay. candy stripers. For, uh -huh. And for many, many years, the adult volunteers were, I call it Pepto Pink. Pepto Pink, yes, that is true. <laughs> Easy to spot though. Yes. Yes. <laughs> not just anybody's gonna be wearing that. That's thing. right. It's That's not, right. it's not for every uh skin tone. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh. But um volunteers, I mean. I hadn't really thought about it, but when you think about candy stripers, pink ladies, all that, I mean, that's from like back when I was a kid that volunteers have served with alongside hospital staff, I guess, for a really long time. I believe that Duncan Regional Hospital, which we refer to now, also uh -huh. as DRHL. Yes. I believe we're 45 years old as of last year. Um, not quite 46, and in the history that I've done, the auxiliary started about six months after the first hospital opened. Of course, there used to be three hospitals in Duncan, and then they combined into one. Right. And then right. Uh, the volunteer auxiliary actually first began under the American Red Cross, uh -huh. and then later became the auxiliary. Which is, which means it's under the hospital. It's under itself, the hospital, kind of. And um, the group is called an auxiliary because we do fundraising, uh, everything that we do as far as the money we raise in the gift shop or fundraising, all the funds that we raise go back to the hospital. So we have to have decision makers. So mm -hmm. we have a, a board of directors. Okay. We have committees. Mm -hmm. And so that is the auxiliary, mm -hmm. that group. Mm -hmm. And then we fall under the Department of Volunteer Services at the hospital. Okay, so when you talk about a board, does that mean um, like you're the the volunt the auxiliary is kind of a separate entity, and is it kind of like a uh, like a nonprofit? We are entity? a nonprofit, uh -huh. and so is the hospital, and so we operate under the umbrella of the hospital, mm -hmm. and so our monies are separate, owned by the auxiliary, but yet overseen also by mm -hmm. the hospital. Mm -hmm. So we get to make a decision on where that money goes. And so many times the hospital will say, or we'll ask them, what need do you have? And so they'll give us an idea of where their greatest needs are, where we might could be of assistance. Yeah. So we've bought equipment. We've helped with remodels. Uh, just a few years ago, we bought some equipment for all the local ambulances and the ER at Jefferson's County, Jefferson County and Duncan Regional that they could use if someone's in heart distress. And yeah. instead of the nurse or the paramedic having mm -hmm. to stand there and constantly do this, mm -hmm. this does the work for them. So wow. uh, we just try to help any way that we can. Wow. So that is, I mean, that that's very impressive. So the volunteer uh, auxiliary um, is more than just little people get answering the phone or yes. giving you directions or... Yes. Um, carrying flowers or right. something to someone's room. Right. Yeah. There are many, many things that the volunteers do. And if you'll allow me so that I don't miss anything. Right. right. Um, on this brochure that mm -hmm. we have, mm -hmm. uh, we have the volunteers at the information desk. We have them that often assist in patient rooms. And, you know, a lot of our patients, they don't get visitors. Right. Or, or their family works a lot and they can only come maybe once a day or every other day mm -hmm. and can't sit with them. So right. our volunteers can brighten the day. And mm -hmm. then we also have volunteers at the cancer center. We have volunteers who actually will pick up cancer patients and drive them for their treatment. Wow. Because either they can't drive, they don't possibly have a family member or a friend to take them. And we have volunteers in surgery waiting. We have office aides. Um, many times they're in the emergency department. Um, we even have a pet therapy dog. So, oh, wow. So, so we have them all over the hospital. Our gift shop is fully staffed. 
by volunteers. I'm the only paid person in the whole department. Really? And so um, that with volunteers that buy, do displays, run the cash register. Wow. They had so you have like a, a budget and they use all of that and run run the gift shop. Mm -hmm. Wow. So wow. So um what what are some of the um like you, you said there's a therapy dog. Mm -hmm. So give us a, an example of of the impact of some of these services. I mean uh, it's wonderful. If you call and there's a pleasant voice and someone who's, you know, sounds like they've just been waiting for you to call yes. to help you, that's, you know, what a great thing that is. The same way when you walk into the hospital, yes. someone is just there and it's as though they just, they've been waiting for you to walk through those doors and they're so glad to see you, you know, and help you find whatever it is you're looking for. Right. Um, but beyond that, you know, what kind of impact do they have on patients or employees or, or things like that? I do think one of the best things that the hot, that the volunteers do for the hospital is that in many times they're the first phase and the last phase mm -hmm. that people see when they come through to the hospital. So mm -hmm. you mentioned them greeting them, but we like to take that a step further. And what I encourage the volunteers to do is not point them to a direction, but if it's very far, get up and walk them there. Mm -hmm. I think one of the biggest times that is most important is a lot of times we have a family member that's driven for an hour, two hours, three hours just to come see their loved one. They're worried. Right. And they've never been to the hospital. They don't know where to go. And so if we walk them mm -hmm. there and connect them with their loved one, it goes a long way. Mm -hmm. We have people who come in and they need copies of their medical records. And it might be that they come in and they can't physically walk all the way to medical records. The volunteer's going to jump up and say, let me get you a wheelchair and I'll take it down with myself. Uh, and then I've noticed they chit chat with them on the way down there. Uh -huh. and so it, it shows that we care. Right. It shows that we want to help meet that need. The therapy dog came this morning. Uh -huh. Her name is Maggie. Oh. And Maggie doesn't just see the patients. Maggie goes to different areas around the hospital. I have a hard time not using my hands. You use them. Wait, this is, <laughs> I'll, I'll flap mine around a little bit, make you feel more comfortable. So, so I was happy to be out in the lobby when Maggie got there. I uh -huh. would go over and, and greet her. And she not only had her little therapy dog vest on, but she had her 4th of July scarf on today. She oh, was very best. Very patriotic. And there are certain departments that she visits as well as patients because the therapy dogs, they're good for everyone. Right. They go to, to the ER, to the ICU, patient floors, and, and she always asks, do you want to visit from a therapy dog? Some people just are family people. Mm -hmm. But the smiles that Maggie brings mm -hmm. is priceless. Mm -hmm. But the minute she gets off that elevator, you can hear the staff going, Maggie, you're here. And they keep treats for her. Mm -hmm. Her business office, I know, keeps treats for her. And by the time she gets through for the day, she is ready to go home. I bet. She's tired. <laughs> I bet she is so and She's so excited. How often does she come? She comes once a week. Uh -huh. uh, Pre-COVID, we had three therapy dogs. And so we're down to one now. Uh, unfortunately, one of them passed away. Aww. And uh, the other volunteer is no longer volunteering. But uh, if anyone is interested and has a dog that's been through the therapy program, there are some restrictions. Right. Uh, but if they, uh, there's a company in Lawton, I believe it's called Pause for Life or Pause with Love or something like mm -hmm. that. And they get obedience training and they get that therapy training. And, and their owner gets that training as well so that right. they know how to behave around patients. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've had several that have come through that program that they just become part of us. They're That's, fans. yeah. Oh, that is so special. And I'm sure that the pet owner is just so glad to be able to, you know, share their animal, you know, with, with people. I, I find it interesting that the, um, I guess the the medical staff, the you know, there's a lot of stress there is. involved with um, caring for people, you know, loved ones who are stressed out, and nurses especially, you know, they're the, right there 
with everyone having to answer hard questions and things like that. And I hadn't even really thought about a therapy animal really being for more than just the patients. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes she also goes to the cancer center. Mm -hmm. You know, those patients may sit there all day. Yeah. And you can only read so many books and watch TV. And, mm -hmm. and um, it can be a depressing atmosphere. Right. So if we can provide something that's uplifting and comforting, that's what we want to do. Mm -hmm. And you know, we have a learning center across from the hospital for oh, the, the nursing, nursing students. school. Uh -huh. yes. So when they are doing their finals, they usually call and let me know when we send the therapy dog over because who gets more stressful than a student in their finals? Yes. And yeah. so she yeah. goes over there and visits them and, and that wow. slightens their spirits. Maggie's a rock star. She's I can tell. tell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she is. And, and her, her owner is also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So um, when people volunteer, I mean, are, do you usually have people who are retired? Um, who are the most of the volunteers? Most, or? most of the volunteers are retired. Uh -huh. uh, we have had some that maybe they work part time, and in the past, I've even had school teachers that would come after they get off of work. Mm -hmm. I think one reason that people tend to be hesitant to volunteer is because they think of it like a job. Right. It's not a 40 hour week job. Uh -huh. And most of our volunteers are only there for three hours a week. We have some that are there for far more than that, but they choose that. Right. And and I always ask them, what are you looking for? Mm -hmm. What do you want to be around people? Do you want to be in an office? Does it bother you to be around sick people? And I try to place them mm -hmm. where they're, they feel most needed mm -hmm. where they feel most comfortable. Mm -hmm. There are some people who love retail, love working in a gift shop. And then I have people who say, I don't work with cash. Don't yeah, it's a catch yeah. yeah, and it's funny how over the years things have evolved. Because when I started in this position in 2000, technology is uh, not where it was today. Uh, yeah, and our volunteers didn't have to use a computer, and the cash register was totally different than what it is now. And I would have volunteers at the information desk who would say. If you make me use a computer, I'm going to quit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now these same volunteers are texting me on their cell phone. Right. And I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So I don't know if I fully answered your question about the age group, but the, the majority of our volunteers are, are 65 and over, and mm -hmm. probably, quite honestly, a lot of them are 70 and over. Yeah. I had one that worked this morning that's 91. Wow. She's awesome. Um, yeah. Uh, and she is, uh, I know she's 90, uh -huh. but she also just became our, um, the King and Queen, Charles and Frank. Oh, boy. So she just became our uh, Founders Day King yeah. and Queen. Yeah, she worked oh, at the man. gift shop this morning. She's amazing. And, um, you know, a lot of people don't realize it, but the more, as we age, uh -huh. the more we keep ourselves active, uh -huh. the more that we use our mind, it really does create some longevity in our lives for us. It keeps that mind sharp. It keeps right. us active. And we we do have a broad range of volunteers. I think our youngest right now is probably just over 30. Mm -hmm. And I know that I have some in their 90s. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the older ones can work circles around the younger ones. Right. Just right. because they they, a lot of people will tell you, that once they retire, they don't know how they have time to work. Mm -hmm. And it, it's amazing when you hear the hearts of these people. They don't just volunteer at the hospital. Many of them yeah. are in Kiwanis, Rotary. Uh, they do things at their church. They help at the Compassion Clinic. Many, many things that they do. Mm -hmm. and, and they have a heart of service, and that's why they're there. And some of them, maybe they've lost their spouse and they live alone. Mm -hmm. it, it's really good for people who just moved here. And they don't know anybody. Oh, so yeah. it's a great opportunity to meet people, to make friends. And a lot of people, when they first retire, they don't want to volunteer right away. Mm -hmm. They want to take a little time. And I always encourage them to take a little time. Right. And you right. take six months, take a year, do what you want to do. And then when you're ready, give them a call. Yeah. And it's always wonderful when they get there to say, you know what? I don't know why I waited so long. Yeah. I really yeah. enjoy this. Well, and when you say three hours a week, mm -hmm. I mean, that seems 
so doable. It is. Yeah. You know, I mean, that is a, that's, that's just a, you know, a morning or an afternoon, just one, one time a week. Now, is, is this only weekdays? Do you have volunteers on the weekends as well? well sometimes in the past, but we prefer to keep it Monday through Friday. Uh -huh. And lots of reasons for that. But we have several different times a day. The people who really like to volunteer, but they are very involved in other things, a lot of them want to come early, mm -hmm. get their time in, and have the rest of the day to do something else. Our surgery waiting volunteers come as early as 5 30 in the morning. Well, you know, I had to be there super early in the morning when you mentioned surgery a while ago. I thought about those two ladies who were behind that <laughs> counter there where you have to go check in and everything. And I thought, yeah, they are there very early. But they're there because you were able to find a fit for them. Right. That is the time frame that they're interested in. Right. For doing and then volunteers. I have some who say, don't make me come before 12 o'clock. Yeah. Because I like to sleep as late as I can because that's why I retired. Right. I want to do things on my time. Yeah. And yeah. so um, we have in surgery waiting, we have shifts from uh, some of them come at 5.30, some at 6, and then they leave at 10. Mm -hmm. And another shift works from 10 to about 2. In mm -hmm. the gift shop, we have two days a week that are early. And on those two days, we have our early bird special. Ah, and yeah. so used to have them here earlier than they are. But right now, they come in at 7.30 on Tuesday mm -hmm. and work until 11.30. Ah, okay. And then on Thursday, 8.30 to 11.30. But then the rest of the time we open, usually I said 8.30, 7.30. The rest mm -hmm. of the time we open at 8.30. Mm -hmm. And on those days until 11 o'clock, we get 20% off store life. Ooh, yeah. There's a and little so, tidbit we all needed to know. Except, you know, there's always those few exclusions. Just, you know, yeah. candy and cards and things yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. So That's people good. really enjoy it's, that. Mm -hmm. And um, the second shift is 11.30 to 2.30 and then 2.30 to 5. Mm -hmm. And... Our volunteers get a little bit of a discount in the gift shop, but not just the gift shop volunteers. All volunteers have a few benefits. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. They get a discount in the gift shop. They get a discount at Advanced Medical because you know it's also owned by DRHL. Uh -huh. And then we give them a volunteer appreciation gift every year during Volunteer Appreciation Week, and they get a Christmas gift. Oh, and nice. they get a free drink in the cafeteria each time they work. Mm -hmm. uh, we try to make it pleasant for them. Those are some pretty nice perks. I mean, really, for a three-hour, four-hour shift a week, that's some pretty good stuff right there. And, you know, the best part probably is, in, in addition to how it makes them feel, mm -hmm. the volunteers, because it is very rewarding. Mm -hmm. And making friendships is very rewarding. But I, I try to, to make sure that they understand that I know you're retired for a reason. You have family you want to visit with, you have trips you want to take, and even though we want them to be faithful with what they do, it's a volunteer position. Right. So I just ask them, if you're going to be gone, let me know when you can so we can get a substitute for you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the volunteers are even great about calling another friend who volunteers and just say, hey, can you switch with me? Mm -hmm. And you'd be amazed at just how it all just works. How out. they just it make just, it all work. So it just all works. how many volunteers do you have? Well, sadly, I will say that prior to COVID, we had about 147. Wow. And uh, we got down to close to 70. I think as of today, we're probably at about 77. Oh, has it really? So it's coming up uh, a little bit. Yeah. Right. And, you know, part of the problem was that when COVID hit, because a large group of our volunteers are elderly, mm -hmm. their family wasn't comfortable with them being there around COVID. And of course, mm -hmm. there, were, there were a couple of times that we pulled everybody and we sent them home because we wanted to keep them safe. Right. And then when we felt like it was safe for them to come back and wear a mask and follow precautions, we brought them back. But a lot of them, their family said, well, this is a good time for you to go ahead and play. Yeah. Or yeah. unfortunately, some of them moved. Mm -hmm. And so just a lot of changes going on. But recently, um, the um, powers that be yes. within the government decided that they are no longer requiring healthcare volunteers to be required to have a COVID vaccination. Okay. And that was part of it too. We had volunteers that quit who said, 
I'm yeah. getting the vaccine. Yeah. And it was hard to see them go because not only were they great volunteers, we cared about them. Right. We still care about them. And yeah. I'm hoping some of them will come back. Right. And I'm gradually trying to contact people and say, I don't know if you're aware, mm -hmm. but you don't have to be vaccinated any longer. And we'd love to have you back. Mm -hmm. So if anyone does watch this and you hear that, please give me a call because we would right. love to have you back. Right. Or tell that friend of yours. <laughs> That's right. Tell them. That's right. So um, would you like to have 150 do you still have we have plenty of, plenty spots. of spots yes and and the way that we've kept going is most of our shifts had two volunteers per shift which made it more fun because mm -hmm. during the times when you weren't constantly busy you had someone to visit with right and that makes it more fun most of our shifts right now just have one person mm -hmm. at a time and so they yeah. would love to have a partner oh i'm sure i'm sure they would um, so, uh, you have, let's see, you had information and then of course you had at the hospice office or respite yeah. volunteers. I would love to talk about yes, that. Let's, that's, that's an area where we truly need a lot of help. Um, we do have one volunteer who works in the office every week. Uh -huh. We could use one more. Uh -huh. And then our respite volunteers go out to the homes and some of the family, some of the patients have plenty of family that can sit with them when they need help or can run errands, go pick up their groceries, fix meals for them, uh, but some of them don't. Now, most of our res respite volunteers don't typically do grocery shopping or pick up meds or right. fix meals, but they can sit with a patient while the family member goes and does those things. Mm -hmm. Or we've had people that just go and visit with a patient just to give them someone to talk to. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes there are things that you would share with someone that you wouldn't share with your spouse because you don't want them to know that you're worrying. Right. Sometimes you just need someone to talk to. Mm -hmm. They can read the Bible to them. Mm -hmm. They can read a book to them. Just, just a presence mm -hmm. there is comforting mm -hmm. to those patients. And it's not a big commitment either. Right. And some of the people want to visit every week. Some of the people just say, I'll call you when I need you. Mm -hmm. um, I know recently we had a patient whose uh, spouse needed to go to a funeral. The volunteer went and sat with the patient while she went to the funeral and was able to go to the funeral dinner and right. do those things that, that she needed to do. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you've ever had a family member that you had to sit with because they were sick, but those days just get longer and longer. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes you just got to get out. That's why I, I just feel like respite care for, I mean, there are so many situations <laughs> where just that little break, just that little time to sit and breathe and, you know, just do a little self-care maybe. Yes or get coffee with a friend or attend a funeral or some other uh, event that, that you just really feel like you need to do. You know, just little things like that. I, respite care just is a is a wonderful idea. I mean, people used to just do it and it didn't really have the whole name thing attached to it, you know, it was just, but uh, to have this coordinated effort, I'm sure that it's just such a relief to families to know that that is available. And um, I'm, I really, uh, I'm, I would guess that that's one place that you could really use. We really could. Volunteers. We really could. And you know, uh, one thing I would like to also mention is we have some families that will not take a volunteer. And I think that is because today's day and time, a lot of people are uncomfortable with yeah. a stranger yeah. coming into their home. Mm -hmm. So what we've started doing is having what the nurse or the chaplain social worker, someone to take that volunteer out with them mm -hmm. the first time the volunteer goes, introduce them, and that way they know these people are certified, qualified to be here, right? and they're not a threat to you, that they're here to help you, mm -hmm. and I think that has helped a lot. Mm -hmm. That something you just said made me think, you, you said certified, and I was thinking before that, um, what kind of vetting process do you go through to allow people to become volunteers and like what would someone like if I said hey Betty I've, I've got some time during the week I'd, I'd like to come and volunteer what do I need to do to 
get all my things done ahead of time? There is an application process. Mm -hmm. um, it's very simple. There are just a few papers that have to be filled out. And then I visit with a volunteer, like I mentioned earlier, to find out what they want to do. Uh, everyone who volunteers has to do pretty much the same onboarding as one of our staff, one of our team members, because we try to treat them all the same in that respect. Right. They have to have a background check. Mm -hmm. They We administer a TB test. And then we normally talk to them about their shot records just to make sure that they're safe to be around the hospital right. environment. Right. And then we have orientation. Now, the orientation is no longer in person like it used to be a pre mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. They have videoed that now. And so I bring them to my office and they have to watch those videos. And it can take about three hours. Mm -hmm. Some people sit and do it all at one time. And I talked to a girl today that she's probably going to do an hour one day and an hour another day because she works full time, mm -hmm. believe it or not. Mm -hmm. And she is a, a part of our grief support group. Right. Which is an area I didn't mention. Mm -hmm. We have an, a retired RN who is also taught nurses, who is highly certified in grief support. And we're going to have a volunteer chaplain and another volunteer who help her. And so she's able to do that at night. She works 40 hours a week. Oh. And so she, she's she been out for a little bit. She's coming back. Mm -hmm. And so work with them. Right. right. Wow. I mean, there, there, you know, it's, it's just a wide range of opportunities that people may have depending on, you know, their personalities or where, what they believe their strengths are and, and things like that. I mean, and grief support. Wow. That's a, okay. I mean, sadly, in a hospital, not not everybody gets well. Not everybody gets to go home, you know. Uh, so it, there are so much that, that that would be, so many times that would be needed. Very needed. And we're very, very blessed because uh, the volunteer that facilitates ours is remarkable. Mm -hmm. She is, is very compassionate, mm -hmm. very caring, and she also knows how to best guide these people through this program. So we have a beginner's program, and then sometimes we have so many new ones coming in, but we have some that have been in it for a while that are just aren't ready to let go. And so when that happens, she starts an intermediate program too. Uh, uh -huh. And I found out recently that some of the people that attend group support are going out to eat dinner sometimes afterwards. Oh, They're building relationships. They yeah. are being able to help each other. Mm -hmm. things. And I'm just seeing all kinds mm -hmm. of good things coming out. Oh, that's awesome. That is awesome. And so maybe people don't even know that they that know. is available. And we have that every Tuesday night. And they have a session that lasts a certain number of weeks. And we put out flyers mm -hmm. that tell the time period. But we have it across the street in our learning center. And it doesn't cost anything. It's free. Mm -hmm. They normally meet for an hour, hour and a half, and they get us on Tuesday nights. Mm -hmm. and it's just a wonderful opportunity. Oh, that's and awesome. And I've, I've had people who that I prefer mm -hmm. uh, that I know personally who were hesitant because they didn't think they would feel comfortable talking to others. It's just such a relaxed atmosphere that before they knew it, they were just opening up, and there's a healing process mm -hmm. that begins. Mm -hmm. And very it's nice. all very, very confidential. Mm -hmm. And that's something I wanted to mention as well, is our volunteers, many of them work in patient care areas, and many of them know about patients. They might know their name. They might know what's wrong with them. But they know and have agreed to uphold the HIPAA practices of the mm -hmm. hospital. Mm -hmm. They We don't tolerate breach of HIPAA. If something were to happen, they wouldn't be allowed to volunteer. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, deliberate, right. a deliberate mistake. Right. You know, we realize that there are times that things accidentally happen, but they're careful. Right. Um, our volunteers take patient privacy as serious okay. as the team members do because we ask that of them. Mm -hmm. And they make that commitment when they sign up to be a volunteer. And they know that it could just as easily be them in the situation that the patient's in. And they would they would expect that same privacy and mm -hmm. confidentiality. Mm -hmm. 
That's that, and that's great information for you to share because maybe some of our viewers would be hesitant to let a volunteer be around them for that very reason. But knowing that, um, you know, they are they are bound by those very they same are, HIPAA rules. Held that high standard. Yeah, um, I mean that the training and all of those things uh, that people are required to go through. Um, I I just feel like that probably makes is is one reason a volunteer program has success you know the patients trust right the patients feel comfortable and you the way you're matching people with their strengths I mean that just enhances that experience for everyone as well it does, it does. And, and I've told them if you get here and you find that you really don't like where you're at come talk to me we'll mm -hmm. put you somewhere else mm -hmm. we also have a program for teen volunteers and uh, we're not offering as long of a program this summer. We actually haven't even started it yet because we've had oh. some delay. I was waiting until the COVID vaccination requirement was stopped okay. because I, I didn't want any students who applied to have to get that mm -hmm. if it was just going to drop in the next week or two. And we knew that was coming. Mm -hmm. But so it's, it's, it has dropped. It has already. Oh, yes. And so. One thing that the auxiliary does is try to help provide information for students who are interested in going into healthcare. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they just think doctors and nurses. We're far more than that. Right. You, you've got RNs, LPNs, CNAs, nurse practitioners, physicians, radiologists, but you also have CPAs, people who are highly trained in computers. Mm -hmm. We have to have our food service, our environmental services, which is housekeeping. Mm -hmm. We we have people in advanced medical. We have physical therapists. We right. have my son, my son is a hospital pharmacist. One of my sons. That's uh, wonderful. Yeah, pharmacy mm -hmm. is another pharmacy role. Right. Yeah. And, and there there is a little bit of difference between hospital pharmacists and public pharmacists. Yes. yes. But they can interact if they're mm -hmm. willing to do the training for mm -hmm. either. And so mm -hmm. we bring these students in and we do the same thing. We say, mm -hmm. what are you interested in? Mm -hmm. And so they're not they're not able to, any volunteer is not able to do anything that requires a certification or certain training, mm -hmm. but they can assist. Right. And so we've we've had students that have gone through and came back and later became team members mm -hmm. as adults. And that is exciting. Wow, yes. For Very sure. exciting. We also participate in the program uh, Pathways. Not Pathways, I'm sorry. The, it's through Duncan High School. Mm -hmm. It's their career internship yes. program. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. We have done that since it began. Mm -hmm. We've had as many as 10 students at a time. Oh, wow. And the, the, the coordinator and I mm -hmm. work together on what time best fits their school schedule. And they come for about an hour and a half, mm -hmm. four days a week. Mm -hmm. And we've have, had some of the have students had them here. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. great. Yes. They're awesome. But it gives them an opportunity mm -hmm. to learn a little bit about what goes on in that field, mm -hmm. what goes on at a hospital. And you can't be in one area of the hospital and not learn more about another area because everything crosses over. Right. You know, the people who see patients in ER, they have to be assisted by radiology mm -hmm. or phlebotomy. It all crosses over, so they get interaction with more than one department. Mm -hmm. That and that is a, I mean, that's like the the volunteer uh, with with the uh, it's like the eye on the future. You know, they're they're really gaining knowledge yes. and realizing, oh, that was not what I thought that was going to be. You know, I maybe it's something else that I'm you know, real, I need to focus on or try, you know, and I love it that that the hospital is able to combine those two things because they're volunteers. They're also giving their time and helping with whatever the situation is. So it's like a win-win, you know. For It is. It is. And, you know, the students who are in honor society at school, mm -hmm. they can come back and say, would you sign this for me? Ah. They have to meet certain requirements to do that. Right. And so I sign off on a lot of students for their volunteer hours for that purpose. It's also good on a college resume. Yeah. yeah. And there are a lot of programs that people go into, especially in healthcare, where they're required to have so many volunteer hours 
to help them be accepted into a program. Mm -hmm. And so we're able to do that as well. Very nice. And another thing that we do is give scholarships. Uh -huh. Okay. We give scholarships to uh, high school students going into healthcare careers. And we have been giving scholarships to students at the Learning Center through the OU School of Nursing. And we've had a couple of other colleges that have uh, came through there. And mm -hmm. we, we give scholarships to help with that. We've given scholarships in the past to LPN students at the Red River Technology Center. Oh, wow. Awesome. Um, good, very good. So um, is that all the auxiliary money that you guys raised? You get what to, I'm referring to right now uh -huh. is part of our you money. Get, you get to use that money yes. and, and decide who's going to yes. uh, do what. So you have a board. Is that another volunteer position? The, that, our board is volunteers. Uh -huh. We don't have people in the community on our board. They're all volunteers. Oh, so, okay. so the volunteers who are in a part of this uh, program are the ones who make up the board. Yes. Oh, very nice. Yes. So we have uh, our, our primary officers mm -hmm. and then we have committee chairs. Uh -huh. And for instance, right now, our, our auxiliary president is a volunteer at the information desk. And we have another officer who is also at the information desk. And we... I mean, just any of right, the volunteers, right. but we have a volunteer who is on the board as a committee chair, and she's over um, the team volunteers and scholarships, okay. and we have one that helps with fundraising. We have one that helps with our call committee mm -hmm. uh, if we need to notify all the volunteers. Oh, okay. Right. Um, we have one who helps them with scheduling, and so there are opportunities if they want to have more opportunities than just volunteering. Mm -hmm. That can be on the board, that can help be decision makers, mm -hmm. that can help be the base in the community. Right. To help recruit other volunteers. Our vice president typically is our membership chair mm -hmm. and helps me with recruitment events at times and reports. So what, what kind of recruiting events do you have? It varies. Um, of course, I recently spoke at the Rotary, right. Rotary when mm -hmm. you did. Mm -hmm. I've also spoken to the Kwanas. I've spoken to church groups. Uh, we are part of when our foundation has women's events. We often will set up a table, mm -hmm. take literature, and encourage people to volunteer. And the down part of that is that's usually people who work. But what oh I find gosh. is everybody knows somebody. Mm -hmm. And it could be a relative. It could be a church. Uh, friend and so if anyone's listening to this and you know someone who's lonely mm -hmm. you know someone who's retired and they're trying to fill their time uh, you know someone who possibly they need to get out of the house and you're having a hard time getting them uh, to maybe you can come volunteer with them and mm -hmm. encourage them to do it mm, that's a great idea friends volunteering together I mean you might start out in the same place but maybe you you know maybe you get in there and split up and make new friends and right. yeah the whole the whole thing that's, right. that's awesome so um what kind of fundraising events do you have um or you know how do you do that and is that some that's something that we would need to know about and how can we help with that our biggest fundraisers are gift shop okay and, and of course it's open monday through friday so go shopping people that's right that's go what shopping. betty's telling us go shopping <laughs> Uh, sometimes we have other events. We do have a linen sale uh -huh. that we have coming up in August, and I believe it's August the, it's either the first and second or the second and third. We'll have it at the hospital. We usually advertise it on Facebook. I have never heard of this before, ma'am. Tell me about this linen <laughs> sale. This sounds interesting. They are sheet sets that usually cost twenty nine ninety nine or thirty nine ninety nine, uh -huh. and they are very very good quality. They're very soft. Uh, they'll even fit over a pillow top mattress, uh -huh. and they have so many colors that you couldn't even name them all. But they also have bedspreads, they have blankets, they have the special bamboo pillows, they have a lot of opportunity to buy Christmas presents. A lot of our staff uh -huh. buy family Christmas presents. They're like sheet sets right. for your kids who have everything right Mama she said yeah. and i bought my grandchildren <clears throat> little blankets that have stars or animals on there that glow in the dark and they just think that's pretty awesome mm -hmm. and it's just it's a great opportunity to actually a lot of our fundraising helps our staff as much as anyone 
because it's not just what they buy, but it's a chance to get away from that stressful situation mm -hmm. and to go down there and look and, and whether they buy anything or not. Same thing with the gift shop. Our staff can come down there and visit with a volunteer. Right. They can look around and see what we have and just kind of check off a little bit of stress. Mm -hmm. But if if you so guys will be watching for that fundraiser. So I where does that where does that happen? It will happen in the hospital mm -hmm. in our conference room. Oh, okay. Yep. All right. We have it in there. Mm -hmm. And we bring in an outside vendor. Mm -hmm. All sales are guaranteed. And he takes just about any method of payment out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's it's just a wonderful opportunity. Well, that sounds very fun. It helps us and it helps the customer because again, these are are like hotel quality sheets. Right, right. For a minimal price. Nice, very nice. I love that. I'm seriously, I have never heard of that, Betty. Oh my goodness. Um, so, uh, you you need more volunteers. You have had many volunteers. Um. What is, what is your favorite part of, of being a part of this volunteer services? What How did you become the director of this service? I worked at a bank for 18 and a half years. Uh -huh. And I had got to the point where I was not happy in my job. I honestly prayed for six months before mm -hmm. I applied for this job. Yeah. And... I wanted to be somewhere where I felt like I can make a difference. And the phrase that I always used myself is the plume where I was planted. Mm -hmm. And the doors that opened for this job, if, if I told you how it happened, you just know that, that to me it was a God thing. Right. And right. my favorite part of my job mm -hmm. was the relationships. There are so many volunteers that I've gotten close to. I have volunteers that are retired. But I still call and check on. Mm -hmm. But they'll call and check on me. Mm -hmm. uh, when I have a volunteer who says, I pray for you every week or I pray for you every day when I say my prayers, what that does for me. Mm -hmm. You that build works. relationships. Mm -hmm. You have a chance to make a difference in their lives. But you also have a difference, a chance to make a difference in the life of anyone who walks in the gift shop or comes who needs help or assistance. There are times when I find myself working in the gift shop if I don't have someone there or mm -hmm. helping at the information desk. The chance that you have to brighten someone's day, you can't put money value on that. Right. It's priceless. Yeah. yeah. That's what I love about my job. Awesome. That is so awesome. So you never really thought about working in a hospital? Never. I never until, did. Until, until, this, until this came open. And when I saw... It posted in the paper, and I, I read it, and and I saw it, it just felt like a right fit for me to do. And so how long have you been doing this? It was 23 years in, in February. Really? Wow. You, you have been doing this a very long time. So when you had almost 150 volunteers, had it grown a lot? Did to get grow. to that point, like when you first started? When we first started, I don't think we have it about 125. Okay. And then we built it. Mm -hmm. And as with any employer, job, organization, you gain, you lose, you gain. Right, right. And yeah. so I still have some that were there when I started. Really? Yes, ma'am. Wow. Wow. Which I feel like that speaks to the environment that they are. I love what they Yes. Do that they, they have found their niche, their next step after retirement. They found a way to continue contributing. And really, I mean, I, this is a, a hospital is a place where people can come in with all kinds of emotions, but there's usually some big emotion attached to the reason they are there. And um, so for, people to be able to meet them right there where they are when they come in and, and to be able to just be, uh, you know, that, fill that need and, and bridge that gap for, for them. I mean, that's a that's a wonderful place to be able it to serve. And, and we've had people who have decided to volunteer because they were a patient in the hospital and they did have a volunteer mm -hmm. who made an impression mm -hmm. and they wanted to come back and do that as well. We've had people involved in a surgery, maybe a family member 
mm -hmm. someone who had surgery and you know they interacted with the volunteers while they were there and they went up to them and said how can I do this ah. it's so fun yeah the volunteers will say hey I think I got us a volunteer <laughs> and they're so excited that's awesome that is so great that is so great well um I, I just think that this is a, a wonderful opportunity for people in our community. And I just really, I'm so glad that you could come on Trail Talk today and just really share with people. I feel like you guys might've caught some of her enthusiasm <laughs> for the love <laughs> of your job. And just, um, I mean, those are, those are great ways that people can serve. And um, I, uh, I just hope that Maybe maybe some people will be able to feel like they could come back now or some other people who are just looking for that little thing to fill in a little time during their week. I love it that it's just a few hours a week that people need to commit to because that makes it seem just so doable. It is, and it really our requirement is a minimum of 50 hours a year. Mm. That's not much. Yeah. And most of our volunteers are just there three hours, but we have some who want to be there more. Mm -hmm. And we have, I have a lady that just began and she started and she said, Can I do two days a week? Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Sure. You can do two days a week. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming. And if people want to find out more, um, what, what would they need to do? They just need to call the main number at the hospital and ask to talk to volunteer services. I can give you my number and it's 580-251-8495 and would love to visit. I also have volunteer packets at the information desk that okay. they can stop and pick up. Mm -hmm. And I want to say thank you so much for letting me come today. Sure. Not only have I enjoyed visiting with you, but I love to talk about the volunteer program because they are the, the, the people who volunteer are what makes this program a success. Mm -hmm. It's not me. Yeah. I I don't consider that they work for me. Mm -hmm. I work with them and for them. Mm -hmm. They are what it's all about. And I would encourage anyone to come and be a part of that. That right there is why you've been able to do this for 23 years, Betty. <laughs> just I'm loving it. Was. Um, so uh, just asking about volunteer volunteer services, contacting the hospital, asking about volunteer services that you can get uh, connected. What was your Facebook page? What's it called? Well, we are we are under DRH Health page. Okay, DRH Health. Yes. Okay. Now we do have a gift shop page. You okay. can contact me through there on uh, Facebook, mm -hmm. and it is just under a DRH Gift Shop. Okay. All right. Very good. All right. We'll get all that information on there. Thank you guys so much for watching Trail Talk today. Next week, Mark McGee is going to be here. He's a historical interpreter, and he's going to talk about the Chisholm Trail and Native Americans and how all of that worked together in history. And so we're excited about that. But Betty, I am just so glad that you could come on and talk about some uh, a very important uh, opportunity in our community. Now, when we sign off, we always say happy trails together. Oh, okay. I would love Are to you do that. You ready? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Happy, happy trails. trails.